Log on, tune in, find out. Cambridge Ideas, transforming tomorrow. Half a billion people watched Neil Armstrong take the first steps on the moon. In the intervening years, space exploration has developed rather differently from how the Apollo 11 crew might have anticipated. Those futuristic cities on the moon have failed to materialise, and the interest levels of governments around the world have waned. But today, other areas of space research are booming. Dix, neuf, huit, sept, the European Space Agency launched the biggest space telescope ever built, Herschel, and the satellite, Planck. NASA have put their faith in Kepler, describing it as not just a scientific, but a historic mission. Sir Martin Rees is Professor of Cosmology and Astrophysics at the University of Cambridge, and he also holds the post of Astronomer Royal. For him, the search is still very much on for life on other planets. The fifth nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. I am old enough to remember Men on the Moon and indeed right back to Sputnik, which was the first uh, artificial satellite launched by the Russians in 1957. And it's interesting, of course, that it is 40 years since Neil Armstrong's first small step. It's even more interesting that it's 37 years since the last men went to the moon and returned. So for the younger generation, it's ancient history. They know that the Egyptians built the pyramids, they know the Americans went to the moon, but uh, these both seem equally bizarre episodes motivated by equally strange national goals. Many of us at that time suspected that uh, by the present there would have been uh, people on Mars, huge structures in space, etc. But in fact there hasn't. Uh, many hundreds of people have been around the Earth in low orbit, mainly in the space station, but there's been no return to the moon. And if there is a return to the moon, I think it's more likely to be the Chinese who get there first, because they are the only nation that has the uh, Dirigis government and the motive to pursue a project of this kind, which is really little more than a stunt motivated by nationalist goals. Two men from the planet Earth, first step foot upon the moon, July 1969, it is. It came in peace for all mankind. If we look at what happened in the last 30 years in space, of course uh, people have gone no further than low Earth orbit, but what has happened has been uh, greater use of space for practical purposes uh, through uh, position finding the GPS satellites and through uh, satellites that uh, probe the climate for weather forecasting and monitor the environment and of course for telecommunications. So if uh, space were, as it were, switched off, we'd know in a few seconds because it would affect uh, us in many ways. But also, speaking as a scientist, space has been crucially important for allowing us to understand the physical world beyond the Earth better. Um, probes have been to uh, the other planets and sent back wonderful pictures so we have a much clearer knowledge of what our solar system contains and also telescopes launched in space have given us a much clearer view than we could get from the ground because they get above the uh, blurring effect of the Earth's atmosphere and they also allow us to observe not just invisible light but in parts of the spectrum that get absorbed by the atmosphere to study X-rays from space and infrared radiation from space for instance. In retrospect, one of the most important things that emerged from the Apollo program was, ironically, the view of the Earth. In fact, one of the astronauts said that the most exciting thing they discovered was what the Earth looked like when you contrasted the uh, fragile biosphere of the Earth with the sterile moonscape on which the astronauts left their footprints. And 
this is very important because one of the great concerns now is that the uh, growing human population is collectively having a major impact on the biosphere. And I think it's very important in the coming decade or two to uh, ensure that uh, a transition is made to an economy where we use energy less wastefully and that we become aware that the biosphere and the biodiversity of the forests, etc., is an important natural resource that needs to be preserved. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. Uh, I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you say. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. For people all over the world. Particularly important year for space astronomy in that there have been three important spacecraft launched, two of them by Europe and one by the US, which are going to give us very interesting results. One of them, called the Planck satellite, named after Max Planck, the great physicist, is going to give us clearer views of the very early universe, analyzing radiation left over from soon after the Big Bang. There's another European project called Herschel named after the great astronomer Herschel, which is going to make infrared observations looking at newly formed stars and galaxies where the stars are shrouded by dust and therefore their light is converted into infrared radiation or where they're so far away that the redshift due to the expanding universe shifts the light into the infrared. There's a third American satellite called Kepler named after another great astronomer, and this is going to be telling us about whether other stars are orbited by planets like the Earth. And that's going to be important because uh, if there is other life elsewhere in the universe, the most obvious place to look would be on a planet like the Earth. I'm sure that within two or three years we'll know from the Kepler observations that there are many other planets like the Earth orbiting other stars. I think it may be 20 years before we actually get an image of a planet, because to conceive how hard that is, let's imagine that some aliens were looking down at our solar system from, say, 50 light years away. To those aliens, the sun would look an ordinary star, and the Earth would look like, in Carl Sagan's nice phrase, a pale blue dot, very close in the sky to the sun, its star, and much, much, much fainter. But by observing that pale blue dot, the aliens could learn quite a bit about it because the shade of blue would be a bit different depending on whether the Pacific Ocean or the landmass of Asia was facing them. So they could refer to the continents, the length of the day, something about the seasons and the climate, and maybe from the atmosphere something about whether there was life. Now in 20 years we'd be doing analyses like that of other Earths around other stars. Now as to whether they will have life on them, I would not take any bets at all because biology is a much harder subject than astronomy and we don't really know how life began on Earth. We know from Darwin's work and his successors how simple life evolved into our marvellous biosphere. But we don't know how it got started and I would hope that 20 years from now we might understand that and when we understand how life got started here we'll have a better idea for how likely it was to start in other environments and where the best places in the cosmos to look are if you want to find signs of other life. Thirty billion dollars for the Apollo program. As one American I was talking to last night remarked here that they should discover God for that much money. To give you a, a better idea of what that may mean in terms which are more understood by us at home, it's this one program to land men on the moon costs five times as much as the United Kingdom's defense budget. The moon landings were an important impetus to technology but you have to ask the question, what is the case for sending people back into space? I think that the practical case gets weaker and weaker with every advance in robotics and miniaturization. It's hard to see any particular reason or any purpose in going back to the moon, indeed in sending people into space at all. Nonetheless, I think many of us do feel that as human beings, we would like to see some people walk on Mars one day, and I hope indeed that some people now living will walk on Mars. But I think they will do this not for any practical purpose, but with the same motive as uh, those who climb Everest or the pioneer explorers. And I think they will do it 
accepting much higher risks than present-day astronauts because it's hugely expensive to have a NASA-type program to go to the moon and even more so to go to Mars. And I think that the future for manned space exploration will be a cut-price, high-risk program, perhaps even partly privately funded, which would be uh, an adventure more than anything practical. I'm very hopeful that uh, the pace of science will continue, at least as far as it is up till now, um, as science advances, new questions come into focus. We're now trying to answer scientific questions that couldn't have been posed 20 years ago, and uh, 20, 40, 60 years from now, I'm sure the questions that scientists will be addressed are questions we can't even conceive of today. So science and technology are going to advance rapidly. The scientific question I'd most like to have the answer to is whether there is life out in space and how life began because I think uh, uh, the biological world is fascinating and uh, uh, this is a question which would have fascinated Darwin it would also have fascinated Galileo it's 400 years since he first uh, made his telescope and looked at the craters of the moon so Galileo and Darwin would both have liked to know very much is there life out in space and I would like to know that too Sir Martin Rees, Professor of Cosmology and Astrophysics at the University of Cambridge, was talking to Kate Taylor. You've been listening to a podcast from the University of Cambridge. Cambridge Ideas. Transforming Tomorrow.